Project 145 is Radio Music Alarm. For this and the next five subsequent projects, you will need an AM radio that is tuned to a space on the AM band in which there are no stations playing. And then you would turn on the slide switch on the circuit and adjust the adjustable capacitor to the right position and you'll hear music playing on the radio itself. and hear the happy birthday song. Then you would connect a jumper wire between these two points on the circuit and the music will stop if it hasn't already. And then if you were to remove one or both ends of the wire, the music will play again. You can pretend this is a burglar alarm. And for instance, you can use a longer wire and wrap it around your bike and then the alarm could alert you if an intruder cuts the wire or removes it. Project 146 is daylight music radio. I replaced the R5 resistor with the photo resistor and then music will play as long as as there is adequate light on the photoresistor. Take away the light and the music stops. One forty seven is night music radio. I inserted the photoresistor right here and now the music will only play when it is dark. Let light reach the photoresistor and the music will stop. This is night gun radio. I replaced the music I see with the alarm I say, and now when there is darkness, the radio will play the sound of a machine gun. The red LED flashes. Here is the radio gun alarm. I removed the photoresistor and inserted the jumper wire. When I removed one end of it, the machine gun alarm will sound and play on the radio. And you could, like with the radio music alarm, you could have a longer wire wrapped around something like a bike or across a door. And if someone cuts or removes the wire, the alarm will sound. Place the wire back and the sound stops. This is daylight gun radio. Now, the alarm will only sound when there is light on the photoresistor. Right now, there's adequate light due to the daylight. If the room is too dark, shine a flashlight on the photoresistor for the alarm to go off. Project 151 is blow off a space war. When I turn on the slide switch, the you'll hear a space war sound, and then... When I blow into the microphone, the sound will stop briefly and start again. This is series lamps. When I turn on the slide switch, both the L1 and L2 lamps light up. These lamps are wired in series. They both share the same circuit. And if I was to remove one lamp, or if one of these lamps was to fail, the other would fail as well. An example of this would be Christmas lights that are wired in series. And if w even just one bulb is damaged or burns out, the others will fail as well. And this will also make it much more difficult to find the bulb that failed. This is parallel lamps. Both the L1 and L2 lamps are connected in parallel. That means they each have their own circuit to operate on. And if one lamp was to fail or be removed, the other would stay on. 
An example of this could be a string of Christmas lights that are wired in parallel, and if just one of the lamps or multiple lamps fail, the rest will stay on, and it will also be much easier to find the lamps that have broken so that they can be repaired or replaced. This is Fire Fan Symphony. When I turn on the slide switch, you can hear sounds from the music, alarm, and space war integrated circuits. The happy birthday song plays, you hear a siren, and sounds from the space war I see. And then you can shine light on the photoresistor to change the space war sounds, or you can push the button, the press switch. There are many different things you can do. Now, as an alternative to 154, 155, you can replace the speaker with the whistle chip. And if you can hear the sound, it'll be much quieter. It seems like you can't even hear it. Fan Symphony is very similar to Fire Fan Symphony except I modified the connections to the alarm integrated circuit and now the sound from the alarm integrated circuit will be different. I think it's out of a machine gun, but the music integrate, uh, but the sound from the music integrated circuit is the same and you can still change the sounds from the space where I say. And then for 157, just simply replace the speaker with the whistle chip and it'll be much quieter if you can hear anything at all. This is Police Car Symphony. When I turn on the slide switch, you hear a police car siren combined with the happy birthday song and also space war sounds from U3. The sounds can be changed by pushing the S2 switch or shining and removing light from the photoresistor. Now, I'm not going to do one project 159 or 161 because you have to replace the speaker with the whistle chip and you don't really hear anything, so it's not worth demonstrating that project. This is Ambulance Symphony. Now, the speaker will make sounds of an ambulance siren. Along with the happy birthday song and space war sounds. This is Static Symphony. I'm going to turn on the slide switch push the press switch, and shine light on the photoresistor. You hear just random sounds from the speaker. The siren you hear is that of a fire engine. And you can have fun with this. And what you can do as part of Project 163, you can replace the lamp with the red LED or the motor and see what happens. The LED is brighter than the lamp because it uses less energy, requires less energy, and you could also do the motor and it spins. It doesn't matter what direction it's oriented. This is capacitors in series. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and then push and release the press switch. The red LED will come on and then gradually go off. Then when I turn off the slide switch, then push the press switch, the red LED comes on and goes off much faster. That's because the smaller capacitor, the C41, 
is now in series with this larger C5 capacitor. And as a result, the total capacitance or electrical storage capacity is reduced and they discharge much more quickly. It should be noted that this is opposite to how resistors in series work. This is capacitors in parallel. I'm going to leave the slide switch off and push and release the press switch. And the LED will gradually get dim. But now when I turn on the slide switch and repeat the test, the LED will go off much slower than before. Now, the larger C5 capacitor is in parallel with the C4 capacitor, and as a result, the total electrical storage capacity or capacitance is increased, and it will discharge much slower. This is opposite as to how resistors in parallel work. This is the water detector. You'll need a cup of water for this, and I'm going to place the ends of these two jumper wires into the cup of water, and the red LED comes on, because water conducts electricity. It may not be too, too bright, but I am going to go right to project 167, in which I add a little, in which I add salt to the water, and I'm going to move the, uh, circuit closer to the cup of water because I'm going to pour salt into it and I want you to watch the LED. Look at that. It's possible the LED might get brighter because salt water is more conductive than clear water. I'm not going to do this, but you can add more water to dilute the salt or you can add other household substances such as sugar to see how they affect the conductivity of the water. This is MPN light control. I have the MPN resist, uh, transistor included in this project, and when light is shining on the photoresistor, the green LED will be lit. However, when I either remove the light or block the photoresistor, the green LED turns off. Electrical resistance increases as light on the photoresistor decreases, and then it will, the resistance will decrease when the light increases, allowing more current to the Q2 transistor, to the MPN transistor. Now here is MPN dark control. The principle of this project is opposite that of MPN light control. Now when I shine light on the photoresistor, electrical resistance increases, causing the green LED to turn off. When I remove the light or cover the photoresistor, the resistance decreases, turning the LED on. But when the electrical resistance increases, current moves away from the MPN transistor. This is like how a street light works, the same principle. A street light comes on at night and turns off at day. This is PMP light control. This circuit includes the PMP transistor, and it's very similar to the MPN light control, except the current flows out of the PMP transistor in opposite directions. But still, the circuit works the same way in that when you shine light on the photoresistor, the red LED comes on, but when you cover the photoresistor, the LED turns off. This is PMP dark control. This project is very similar to MPN dark control, but like I said for project 170, the current will flow in and out of the PMP transistor in opposite directions. When I cover the photoresistor, the red LED comes on. When I shine light or remove my hand from the sensor, the light goes off. Here is red and green control. You can turn on the circuit by either turning on the slide switch or the press switch. I'm going to do the slide switch. The red LED comes on. And when you move the adjustable resistor, 
the lever of the adjustable resistor away from the red LED, the electrical resistance increases on this side of the circuit. However, if I held down the press switch, the green LED will be on, and it will be much brighter than, well, the red LED is off, because that uses up more energy, keeping the red LED very even dimmer. When I move the RV lever back toward the left, let's say I'm holding down the press switch, the green LED will dim while the red LED brightens, because now the electrical resistance is higher on the right side. Now, if I was to, let's say, turn off the red LED, the green LED will only be slightly dimmer, but it will be completely bright at full brightness when the RV lever is on the right side. You could uh, play around with the circuit for, and have your own fun, but this could act like a traffic light, a red and green traffic light. This is current controllers. You can see that the LED is on but dim. When I turn on the slide switch, the LED becomes brighter. Then when I push the press switch, the LED will be even more bright. However, while holding down the press switch, I'm going to turn off the slide switch and the LED is dim even though I'm holding the press switch down. That's because when the slide switch is on, the R3 resistor will control the current. But when I turn on the press switch, the R2 resistor will be in parallel with the R3 one, and the total resistance will be decreased. Then finally, when I turn on the slide switch, the R4 resistor is in series with either the R2 and R3 or R3 resistor so that the total resistance is, resistance is increased. This is current equalizing. You'll notice that the red and green LEDs are bright, but the L1 lamp is off. That's because a higher current is needed through the circuit to turn on the lamp than the LEDs. This is battery polarity tester. You'll see that there are no batteries powering the circuit. However, you're going to insert a battery pack either using jumper wires or directly to the resistor and three snap wire. And the LED that comes on will be determined by the direction in which the battery pack is placed. If it's put on this way, with the positive side connecting to the resistor, the red LED will come on. However, if I was to connect the battery pack the other way, I can't really connect it directly on, but if the negative side of the battery holder is uh, connected to the resistor, then the green LED will come on.